Good afternoon, everyone, and a huge welcome to UCD's Human Health Impact and Technology Series, where we speak to cutting edge health and technology innovators from across the world. My name is Professor Patricia McGuire, and I'll be your host for this series. Today, I have the honor of introducing you to Professor Tahar Kashadi, who's full professor in the UCD School of Computer Science and also principal investigator in the SFI Insight Center for Data Analytics in Dublin. And we will chat about engineering the metaverse. Welcome, Tahar, to the hit series. Thank you, Patricia, for having me in this series. Um, You're very welcome, Tahar. And my first question for you today is, how would you describe your area of research and how would someone get into this? Yeah, um, maybe in two words, I would say I always call myself as a data scientist. I am a data scientist. If I say a few words about data science, I think it is a study of data to extract meaningful uh, insights. And uh, it is a multidisciplinary approach that combines mathematics, uh, statistics, and artificial intelligence uh, you know, uh, concepts uh, to analyze a very large amount of data. It is considered as the fourth paradigm actually in science. Uh, we have the empirical paradigm, we have a theoretical paradigm, we have computational paradigm, and this one now, it's data-driven paradigm. So uh, it, it's great to be uh, <laughs> one of the experts in this, uh, in this field. Fantastic. Thanks so much, Sahar. I'm sure we have a lot of questions from our audience around that, but maybe you could tell us a little bit about your research in, in UC Dublin. I mean, you, you have a project called the Big O Project. I'm just wondering, maybe you could tell our, our audience a little bit about this. Yeah. Um, currently, my central focus of my research really is uh, how to collect, manage, prepare, analyze data quickly efficiently for a given application. And uh, an application can be uh, real world, can be healthcare, can be agriculture, can be any kind of these uh, big challenges today. And um, considering all the, the challenges of big data, today big data is described with four really main challenges, like you know the volume, the velocity, the veracity, and, uh, and the variety. But actually, we forgot two fundamental ones, which are uh, security and data privacy. So I, in my research, I include these two as well, part of those. Now, in relation to big, big, big data is, is actually a very successful project, which is an EU project. Um, and actually, we applied this. Uh, it's not only a, a big data problem but with security and privacy, because we are dealing with children. We collect data from children. And the, the, the well, I, I would say the, the ambition of uh, the big goal is to collect 25, 000, you know, data from 25,000 children. We reached at the end of the project about 9,000, which is really big. The innovation about this project and as well, the, the we, how we motivate the, the, the children is to we build an app, which basically implement, uh, deployed in the Apple Watch, well, not smartwatch, I would say, and as well smartphones, and we uh, the the innovation about the app, it's it's actually seamless. You just have it in your wrist, or you have your phone in your pocket, and it collects your activity. And the good thing about this is when it sends the data, it sends data anonymously to the servers, so we can analyze the activity of of the children without disguising their privacy in terms of where they were, what they uh, say, and so on. So. That, that, that's the idea and it's I have to say it was very very successful and I'm sure we will have a lot of questions right now I mean data on 25,000 children around their levels of activity and you know we see in the news every day that obesity is becoming a global epidemic you know so we'll we, we'll talk about that more later I'm sure our audience will have questions but you also look at the metaverse so just for uh, our non-computer scientists in the audience, what is the metaverse and what research do you do in this area? Yeah, maybe in, in, in very lay language, I would say uh, it's a fully immersive, uh, self-sustaining virtual share space, space with, with that combines the physical, the human and digital words. So we have three words within one, I would say, the, the physical, the one we live, the human, because we are the actors, and then, of course, the digital, 
where when, now everybody can be described by, by their data. So that, that's the, the idea really. And we have all the technologies uh, developed independently, I would say, uh, that today if we bring it together, we can build this, such system. And there are examples already of such system. So users can live then as digital natives and experience an alternative life in, in, in virtual you know, word. It just sounds so surreal <laughs> to me, but I mean, I know we, we all have a digital identity, but what research do you do in this area, uh, Tahar? Yeah, like you see from, uh, th that's funny actually, because from the, the computer scientist's point of view, it's not an, it's just another paradigm really of the of way we, can, we do things, you know? And when I started working, you know, as a, as a, Young researcher, I would say, started working in the grid, and then grid moved into cloud computing, and then edge computing. All of this, and now we are moving into metaverse. It's just another system with different needs and different, I would say, objectives. So, uh, if 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 I say if, as a computer scientist, metaverse is another evolution of grid, and even the internet itself. Uh uh, so impacting, how is this going to impact healthcare? That's what I'm fascinated ah. about in my whole, you know, areas, you know, intersecting of AI and healthcare, but how could the metaverse impact healthcare? What, what, what do you foresee, Tar? You see, I think, you know, there are many, I would say there are many. I think there are, we, uh, I think the metaverse has the potential to reshape the whole healthcare landscape. But if we focus on few, I would say one of the most important thing is the advances in medical research. Uh, today, medical research, you have to do them within the small environment, maybe for whatever the reasons, the reason because maybe you don't have access to the patients, whatever, or you don't have the scale to build you know, the money to build the experiments. Well, the metaverse will give you that. It's the global collaboration for in medical research, you know, that basically accelerates the discovery of new treatments and therapies and, and so on. I think, you know, the research thing is, is very important. The, the other thing is training. Training now will become, with metaverse, becomes cheaper. Again, for the same reasons maybe as the research. The other thing is we have heard about telemedicine and, but with virtual care, telemedicine will, you know, will be brought to another level of precision and as well, even innovations. Okay. The, I was already, I was reading about this when I started working on this. Some healthcare experts mentioned that, you know, the mental health innovations as well, metaverse will help, you know, advance this. And mainly, for example, virtual reality therapy seemingly it works so far so but the metaverse would only and I, I would say will bring it to another level and um, the other thing the, you know the patient outcomes i would say you know the patient engagement in in for example following the treatment and so on i think metaverse will give them a way to 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 motivate them to basically um follow the treatment and execute it properly I would say the last two, I would say, uh, you know, is the, you know, accessibility to care. I think the, this, the metaverse will give access to even the poor people to, to get the, the same care as the others. So what, we're going to just log oh, on. Yeah, we can mention, we can we're going to log it. in. We're all going to log. So you foresee a future that we're all going to just log into our phones, into this metaverse, access a virtual clinician, a virtual nurse. Exactly. and interact and so so what's a so what's a digital twin for health then i mean what what is that what are we gonna what what how can you know describe to our audience how they'll interact with a clinician or a nurse or a care provider online in the metaverse through digital twin it's the, the, first of all I, I would say the digital twin is uh, within the metaverse would be only good for you know, designing, I would say, the the um, the care itself as as a as a user. You use metaverse. Actually, the digital twin will be a small part of the metaverse itself, even within the healthcare. And um, how to access? You access it through your 
avatar, I would say, you know, uh, you will have one, uh, you, even you can have many. And within that, you, uh, whatever the care you want, you, you will be guided within, through the system, within the, through this virtual world to wherever you want. I don't know whether you want to see GP, you want to see uh, a nurse. And, and, and then of course you get all of this information and you will have as well some, uh, some follow up that the metaverse itself will feed you uh, and uh, interact with it. It's like a, a game if you want. So that's really interesting because there's a lot of questions coming in around this whole metaverse and health and, and, and how will it, and I suppose I'm just trying to summarize a couple of questions here in terms of like for, uh, you know, someone that's really, uh, you know, isn't well and they're just feeling, you know, pretty weak and tired and how is it going to be personalized to them in terms of their avatar? You know, I, I suppose just give us a sense of what that might look like. Yeah, well, the, the technology, first of all, the metaverse is at early stage at the moment, you know, the, the technology is over, just about uh, starting some uh, systems are a little bit more, uh, you know, advanced than the others. In the medical area, we are thinking to, a lot about it because there are many issues to solve before mm -hmm. having the real perfect metaverse. But if, assuming that we have that metaverse itself, so then you, through, as I said, you know, the avatar, you know, your virtual, you know, Patricia, for example. So you go into this system and you, the, the system has already a lot of information about yourself, about your health, about, uh, so, the then the care will come to you more or less rather than you going to the okay. uh, care. And okay. the, you understand what I mean. And and uh, Tara, just in terms of your you're also looking at the metaverse in terms of improvement of farming and food production. And the audience is just asking about that. They're obviously aware of your research. So maybe you could just tell us a little bit about that in about 60 seconds. Yeah, I mean, in relation to the uh, the it, yeah, I mean, the, the food production is one very, very important thing. I think I think the metaverse within that, we will learn how to optimize the operation of the production operation from the, the food when it's, when it's, it's, it's a, it, even it's, uh, it's, it's, you know, like the, the crop when they are seeded until they will come into the, the bread or whatever. So it means all of the, the full chain will be optimized. You use, if I take, for example, in the agriculture uh, where, you know, in, in the crop production, you basically, we, we, want, we want to produce more, obviously, mm -hmm. with, but efficiently while preserving the environment. All of these things, the metaverse will allow you to optimize this because you, you are fed with all of the data from different angles so that you can see how to leverage all of this. I think this is a, an excellent opportunity to mm -hmm. optimize the food a, a, a chain while actually you are looking after your environment and as well after your health, you not put a lot of pesticides and all of this kind of thing. So you can test lots of, so basically what you're saying, exactly. you test exactly. lots of different scenarios, look at smart farming, look at different ways and see can you optimize food production. So there's actually questions coming in around the Big O project and that's a project on childhood obesity. And, and I suppose, have you is that project finished i'm just curious people are curious of, of what were the outcomes what what did you see yeah uh, we, we see uh yeah i mean we, we see that you know the 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 rich society may because it's done in eu uh, and the countries where the data is collected ireland and uh, greece uh, sweden and so on so the we, we saw that there is obesity due to the lifestyle and the way we, for example, the gaming thing, the TV, all these kind of, um, you know, activities, they are actually, well, activities, I would say, I don't know, I should, I should call them activities, but uh, they limit your physical activity and, and therefore you become more engaged in this and the less, you know, uh, I would say, um, uh, gym, less uh, sport, less uh, movement, and so on, and therefore, and of course, the food is is available, and that's the thing. So uh, we notice that we, we we notice there is a change in behavior. The, the, the student they they tend to be uh, less active 
than actually uh, they should be. Okay. So that's uh, that's what we the, the, I would say the, the overall picture of what and it's done clinically clinically and as well done widely with just the data itself. Yeah, and recently, just this, people are asking about cybercrime. You're obviously, you know, I know your data security and analytics and around data privacy security. So it does impact lots of different areas. It's very transdisciplinary, but it just we're, we're kind of running out of time. But I'm curious around uh, your research on cybercrime in this area. So if you looking at, uh, uh, maybe you could tell us in 30 seconds uh, around that. <laughs> so the, the, the idea about the, the you see the, the big challenge here you have a huge data coming it's if you have nine thousand you are looking at about a huge amount of data coming from all of these sensors from the food what you eat for, to the activities and so on so the idea is how can we secure this data first of all make it anonymous it means it comes from x and still x still x and that's the, uh, the idea then of course prepare it so that it can be analyzed in the way that it should be analyzed by used by machine learning and so on. So that having this system, maintaining the system, man, maintaining the flow of data coming uh, into the system and as well uh, uh, consuming it, you know, to analyze it, it's a very, very challenging platform. Mm -hmm. It's more or less the, the size of the metaverse. Okay. And fed do you use federated data models? So is this idea of, of, of securing the data and using a federated data model, is that what's used, Tahar, to actually secure we, it? We, well, we used uh, various techniques, for example, of anonymizing the data. For mm -hmm. example, if you are exercising in, du in Dublin here around UCD, when I store the data, I will never show that it's UCD as geolocation is not UCD. Something looks like, you, like the path you've done, to know how many steps whatever you've done but we 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 will not guess that you are you did it in your city just various techniques of okay various techniques to kind of uh, pseudo anonymize anonymize the de-anonymize yeah. the data okay last question for you will we be having uh, uh it's a great question whoever sent it in we'll be having webinars like this in the metaverse will all our avatars be on webinar webinars like this in the future Tahar? i'm sure yes it will i, I believe in that <laughs> Okay, because no, you're completely out of time, but I have to ask it because I thought it was just a really... Our avatars... We are going towards this anyway. It's inevitable. Are... Yeah. It's inevitable. Okay, interesting. Thank you so much. Uh, we are completely out of time. So sincere apologies to all of you whose questions I did not get to. It's absolutely fascinating, Tara. Thank you so much for Thank such a much, fascinating sir. discussion. It was brilliant. Thanks, Tara. Thank you very much. And thanks everyone for joining in and please do check out our website for our list of upcoming speakers and I'll see you all very soon on our next tip series. Take care everyone. Bye. Thank you. Bye.